Suppose we want to find a context-free grammar for a regular language. Well, we could find the context-free grammar by breaking the language into unions, concatenations, and closures. What if we try to find it from the corresponding finite automaton? Remember Gauss's dictum, even though we've solved the problem in one way, let's try to solve it a different way and see if that gives us any further insights. So remember a finite automaton has states Q, with a transition rule delta that describes how to move from one state to another. A context-free grammar, on the other hand, has variables v with transition rules p that describe how to change one variable into others. This suggests we could identify the states of our finite automaton with the variables of our context-free grammar, and our start symbol s can be identified with the initial state q0. So remember, if you build it, they will come. So let's see if we can do that. So consider the language with a given finite automaton. Let's see if we can construct a context-free grammar. So remember, it helps to think of variable s as a string in the language. Suppose we have a string in our language. If the first symbol is 0, we'll move from state s to state b. But if we view the states as variables, this means that s itself will begin with a 0 and be followed by some string variable b. And this suggests the protection rule s produces 0 b. Similarly, if our string begins with a 1, we move to state c. And again, this suggests that our string begins with a 1 followed by some string. And so this suggests the production rule s produces 1c. Similarly, our transitions from b suggest the rules b produces 0b and b produces 1s. From c we get And from A we get Now there's one more detail. Since A is a terminal state, it's possible there are no symbols to process. And this suggests we have one last production rule. A produces the empty string. And the empty string must be included in our set of terminal symbols. And so this suggests our context-free grammar will have variables s, a, b, and c, terminal symbols 0, 1, and the empty string, our start symbol, and our production rules. And remember, if you don't find your mistakes, someone else will. So let's check to see if our grammar produces x, where x is a string accepted by our finite automaton. A string accepted by our finite automaton is, um, well, it's kind of hard to say just looking at the finite automaton, but we might approach it this way. If x is accepted by our language, there's some path from s to a. So let's try to work backwards from a. So suppose we end at a, that'll be our accepting state. We could have gotten there by the transition from c, a 0 takes us to a. We could have also gotten there starting at a, reading a 0, which takes us back to a, or starting at a, reading a 1, taking us back to a. Now, since we do want to construct a specific string, let's just pick one of these. How about a reads 1 and goes back to a? So again, we're at a, and we could have gotten to a from c, or from a, or from a, and again, we'll just pick one of these. How about c to a by reading a 0? So now we're at C. 
We could have gotten to C by, well, actually there's only one path. We had to start at S and read a 1, and since there aren't any other choices, we had to use this path. So now, we could have gotten to S by starting there, but that's boring. So we could have gotten there from B reading a 1. Now we're at B, we could have gotten to B by... So again, we'll pick one. And the only way to get to C is again through S reading a 1. And while we could keep going, let's use this. So notice that our path S reads a 1, then a 1, then a 1, then a 1, then a 0, then a 1, and this means 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1 is a string in our language. And so the question you've got to ask yourself is, can we produce this string using our grammar? And in fact, we can follow the same directions, except this time we're reading the production rules. S produces 1C, C produces 1B, B produces 1S, S produces 1C, C produces 0A, A produces 1A, and then A produces the empty string, and so we can produce the string 111101. Likewise, we can imagine a string that does not lead to an accepting state. Say we end at B, we could have gotten there from C reading a 1. We could have gotten to C from S reading a 1. We could have gotten to S from B reading a 1. And we could have gotten to B from S reading 0. And we could have started at S. And so this corresponds to the string 0, 1, 1, 1. which, because we end at B, is a string that is not accepted by our language. Meanwhile, if we apply our production rules, S produces 0B, B produces 1S, S produces 1C, C produces 1B, and at this point we have no rule that will eliminate B. In particular, while we could keep applying production rules, remember that our production rules never eliminate a terminal symbol. So at this point, unless we can just get rid of B, we're not going to produce the string 0, 1, 1, 1 by itself. We'll produce a string beginning 0, 1, 1, 1. 